Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous two videos, we looked at the relationship between Gibbs free energy, the cell potential, and the equilibrium constant. And now we're gonna look at the cell potential um, if we're not at standard conditions. So for example, if the concentration is not one molar. So in the previous unit, when we studied thermodynamics together, we learned how to calculate the Gibbs free energy of a reaction at non-standard conditions. And the formula that we used was delta G at non-standard conditions is equal to delta G at standard, standard conditions as that degree sign there, plus RT natural log of Q where R is the ideal gas constant, 8.314 times 10 to the negative third kilojoules per mole Kelvin. I tend to work in kilojoules, and so that's why you would need to convert the R gas constant to kilojoules. Temperatures in Kelvin, and Q was something we learned in the equilibria unit, which is products over reactants. <clears throat> Now, in a previous video, in this electrochemistry unit, we learned that Gibbs free energy is equal to negative N moles of electrons transferred times Faraday's constant times the cell potential. So basically, we could substitute that formula in here. Notice how there's no degree symbol there because we're not at standard conditions on the left side. But here we are, so just plugging in that formula. Remember, N stands for the moles of electrons transferred. F is Faraday's constant, and then E cell potential at non-standard and standard conditions. <clears throat> Plus RT natural log of Q. I'm just divide everything by a negative in F, so therefore we get E cell at non-standard conditions is equal to E cell at standard conditions minus RT over in F. <clears throat> Natural log of Q. So we know the R constant We'll assume temperature's 298, and we know Faraday's constant. So we can kind of distill this down and also put it in log form like we did before um, when we did like the equilibrium constant. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So if we say that RT in F natural log of Q is 0 0.0592, volts over N log Q. So that's 0 0.0592 volts over the moles of electrons, so that can change depending on your redox reaction times log Q. So we're just saying this is all equal to this, just simplifying it more um, in the form that you would see on your info sheet if you're taking my course. This is the Nernst equation. It allows us to calculate the cell potential for a reaction at non-standard conditions. No need to memorize this formula. I know it, there's a lot to it. You just need to know how to use it. <laughs> that is it. And know when to use it, right? Like that's the critical thing. So it allows us to calculate the cell potential at non-standard conditions. You would need to calculate the cell potential at standard conditions. We know a variety of ways of doing that, cathode minus anode. We can also calculate it from the Gibbs free energy of the reaction if we have that available. just depends what you have. <laughs> and then we need to know the moles of electrons transferred. And then we need to know the products of a reactants, that relationship there, excluding any solids or liquids. So let's go ahead and do that. 
We have a voltaic cell for the following redox reaction. Let's first calculate the cell potential under standard conditions like we've done before in previous videos. And then we can calculate the cell potential at these conditions that are not one molar. So remember when you're calculating cell potentials, it's important to break them into half reactions. So you can see what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. That tells you what's occurring at the anode and what's occurring at the cathode. So remember, half reactions are like finding the siblings in the equation, kind of splitting them apart from the other half reaction. Remember that elements in their natural state have an oxidation number of zero. So it looks like we're getting more negative here. So iron is undergoing oxidation or reduction. Reduction, very good. How many electrons do I need to add to the reactant side? Excellent, six electrons, very good. So we can see that this was a plus six, and over here is neutral. So I need six electrons to make this side the same as this side. So now they're both neutral. It doesn't always have to be neutral, you just need to balance the charge, whatever that might be. And this one is also losing six electrons. It's very important for us to know later on when we do the second part of this equation. So reduction occurs where? Anode or cathode? Excellent. It occurs at the cathode. And so you would look this up or it would be provided within the context of the problem, the reduction potential. And then this one's undergoing oxidation. And so that occurs at the anode. Just keep the sign as is because when we calculate the cell potential under standard conditions, it's cathode minus anode. Remember that minus sign kind of takes care of the fact that it's occurring at the anode and not the cathode. <clears throat> and you know, there was a clue already that this was going to be a spontaneous reaction because it says it was a voltaic cell. And so the fact that we have a positive cell potential does indicate this is spontaneous under these standard conditions. But what happens if, let's say, hypothetically, I change the concentrations in my voltaic cell? If that happens, then you will need to use the Nernst equation. And it's 0.0592. It's just kind of combining. Remember, we simplified all those constants into one number. Convert it natural log to log, which is something like 2.303. <laughs> um, and so that's also taken into account there. But we have 0 0.0592 divided by the total moles of electrons transferred. For this redox reaction, we determined it to be 6. So that was from this part here, from the half reactions. And now it's times log of Q. So we need to figure out what Q is. Well, remember that Q is products over reactants. And so it's the concentration of magnesium cubed over the concentration of iron squared. We do not include solids, right? Or liquids if liquids were there. So products over reactants take into account the stoichiometric coefficients. That's really important. And we'll plug the concentrations in here. And when you plug that in to your calculator, you get a large number, 1.5625 times 10 to the 7th. When you plug all of this um, information into your calculator, you should get 2.26 volts. So still a spontaneous process, as we saw under standard conditions, but less so, right? It kind of decreased in the cell potential, in the current, if you, if you will. And why is that? Well, we can use our knowledge of Le Chatelier's principle to help understand what took place here. We see that the concentration, um, and, and, and the reason why you can actually 
think about Le Chatelier's principle because I know you thought of it when you did equilibria and you're like, wait a second, I don't see an equilibrium arrow. But remember, this is all a circuit, right? It's all connected through a salt bridge and then the electrodes are connected through that wire and so electrons are traveling, right? So you can kind of use that Le Chatelier's principle um, knowledge to understand how changing concentration can affect the salt potential under non-standard conditions. And so we saw that we have a concentration of magnesium of 2.5. Basically, we increase that concentration, which kind of shifts this, the electron flow back to the left here. So it should make sense that the cell potential going forward has actually decreased due to this increase of concentration of the magnesium ions in solution. can see this here in the zinc and copper um, voltaic cell that we have under standard conditions. And let me just write down the full reaction so you can see it. So zinc and copper 2 plus copper solid. There we go. Okay, so under standard conditions, we see that the voltage is 1.1 volts, so definitely spontaneous cell potential there. But under non-standard conditions, whatever, you know, they may be, it looks like it's increased the cell potential. Why is that? Well, it looks like the concentration of zinc ions in solution has decreased, whereas the concentration of the copper 2 plus has increased. And so if you use the Le Chatelier's principle again, you can say, well, if this has increased, then that shifts the equilibrium toward the light right here, increasing this um, cell potential under these non-standard conditions. So once again, kind of tying in what you've learned in the past, um, into other fields of chemistry um, is, is pretty fascinating. It's all connected together, and hopefully you're starting to see that in the second semester general chemistry course. <clears throat> so what we've learned is that a difference in concentration drives the current flow. And this can also be proven by having two of the same half cells. Um, so for example, if you had copper um, and copper 2 plus ions in both, same concentration, standard conditions, as you would expect, nothing really happens here. However, if we change one of the solutions to become more concentrated, then we see that under these non-standard conditions, we actually have... A current going right we have a cell potential so let's look at that <clears throat> using the Nernst equation to kind of understand it better so reduction occurs at the cathode kind of dissecting these cells here so I'm writing the reduction half reaction and then you were to look this up or it be provided on your assessment the reduction potential for this half reaction is 0.34 volts and then oxidation occurs at the anode so remember oxidation is a loss of electrons it occurs at the anode 0.34 volts but remember, and then your overall <clears throat> E cell at standard conditions would be cathode minus anode. So it'd be 0 0.34 minus 0 0.34, which is zero volts. And that's what we see um, in this figure here. If we were to build um, if we were to build this voltaic cell <clears throat> in the laboratory. Now, if we wanted to change the concentrations of the copper um, and, for example, make this one here, the product copper, 0 0.01 molar, and then the reactant copper 2 plus 2 molar, right? So then what would that look like? Well, E cell 
is equal to standard conditions E cell, so 0 volts minus 0 0.0592 volts over how many electrons transferred? Two. Good, excellent. That's also why it's so important to write your half reactions. So divided by two, and then take the log of Q. Everything's one to one here. So we're just going to do products over reactants. When you plug that into your calculator, you will get the 0 0.068 volts. So now we have <clears throat> spontaneous reaction here until it goes towards equality. So eventually, um, the co concentration of the copper two ions in the two half cells will work towards equality. And what we get from this example here is that electrons spontaneously flow from the half cell with the lower copper concentration to the half cell with the higher copper concentration. If you think about it, remember that the copper is a positive cation, right? And so the electrons are like, yeah, I want to go over here in order to kind of balance out um, the charge and go towards, once again, equality. And so that's something to always remember that electrons spontaneously flow from the half cell with the lower copper concentration to the half cell with the higher copper concentration. So in this video, we learned about the Nernst equation, which allowed us to calculate the cell potential under non-standard conditions. We brought in knowledge from our equilibrium unit of Q, the reaction quotient, which is products over reactants. Only use aqueous or um, if you have gases, you can do partial pressures for Q, but never liquids or solids. We also needed to figure out the moles of electrons transferred and remember how to calculate the cell potential under standard conditions. And when, so we can see by changing concentrations, we can definitely affect the current and the cell potential. <clears throat> we saw that in this zinc copper voltaic cell in addition to a concentration cell where it was both copper, copper two plus ions, and both the anode and cathode, and just changing the concentrations, we saw how it drove the current flow. <clears throat> Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.